study with all of these lovely candles there. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Good morning. I can say Merry Christmas. You want me to say Merry Christmas Eve morning or something like that. But we are celebrating Christmas today. And so our song service is a Christmas Eve hymn festival. There's lots of singing for you to do. And I hope you will enjoy that. We have some explanations of some of the of the uh, songs as well. While we're finished with getting ready, I will point out the little candles. We are doing candles this morning. The proper etiquette for candles, you cannot touch a candle, is when there's a lit candle and you're passing the flame on to the person next to you, do not turn it over because they do drip and hot wax is hot. Instead, just simply put the candle like this, and there you go. Didn't think this through very well. I have a mask on. Just <laughs> blow things out. I guess mask up work. Interestingly. Okay, we'll try. <laughs> you want to guess the mask up work to some degree? There you go. So we will have that section near the end of the service if you didn't pick one up. They are available. I guess my batteries are dying there. That's the problem now. Do you have a runner that could run a couple down to me? And I checked them right before we began and they said they were good. Okay. Oh, Mr. Keith. Uh, so anyway, we will begin our service momentarily at this point. And I think I got it done. Managed to go ahead and let's start them up. If you'd like to rise, that might be helpful to begin the service at this point. <laughs> Spirit, 
We join together to pray. O oh God, you once caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. By your spirit we have known the mystery of that light here on earth. Please be seated. We hear again the good news from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2. Following each section of the reading, we sing songs of Christmas joy, echoing the sounds of the angels on that first Christmas night. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. Visits to the little town of Bethlehem by Reverend Charles Brooks of Pennsylvania in 1865 led to his writing of one of the most beloved of all Christmas hymns. We reflect on the importance of that special place. Oh 
Christmas songs and carols that include references to angels and the angelic host. Now more than two centuries old, Angels from the Realm of Glory was written by English poet James Montgomery, who is the author of a number of hymns that we sing throughout the year. We invite the angels to join our worship of the Christ child as we sing. <laughs> Some of the Christian songs we cherish have deep historical roots. Now we sing, now sing we, now rejoice, 
dates back to the 13th century. So it would have been known by Martin Luther and his family in Wittenberg, Germany. Originally, the lines in the song alternated between Latin and German. Together we raise our voices to heaven as we join the multitude of the heavenly host in heaven holy song. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds sent to one another. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Although a way in the manger has been called Luther's Cradle Hymn by some people, its actual Lutheran connection comes from the fact that it was first published in the Lutheran Sunday School Hymnal in Philadelphia in 1885. It was not translated into German until 1934, but since then has become well known by Christian people in the old world as it were here in the new world. <laughs> that had been told them concerning this child. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorified and freed God, for all they had heard and seen, and Each generation adds to the list of favorite Christmas songs 
as different nations and cultures enrich the repertoire. The, the spiritual Go Tell It on the Mountain, for many years limited to African American songbooks, has become treasured addition to hymnals not only in the United States but worldwide. The shepherds glorified and praised God as they returned to their fields and to their lives. We shape our worship and our lives with praise to God for the gift of the Savior, the baby Jesus born in Bethlehem. all these things includes her personal experience of that first Christmas night with the angels and the shepherds and the promise of God coming true. God has kept his covenant with his people. We are blessed by it. With renewing faith, growing hope, and expanding love of this most holy night, we sing. Considered 2020 has been a pretty dark year, I suppose you could say. We started with the impeachment of the president. We had civil unrest throughout much of it. We've had a contentious election and afterwards of the election. Yet if all that turmoil wasn't enough, there's even more, isn't there? There's a COVID pandemic. Otherwise, I don't think any of us would be wearing masks and we've been wearing masks for some time. Imagine thinking last year, early last year, going into a bank wearing a mask or not wearing a mask and being told to put one on. It's craziness. Businesses closed, some closing themselves forever because they can't go on. 
schools that closed, children learning by computer, and all of these things, ICUs filled with people, numbers growing daily of the people who were sick, many dying. And even some in our own community heard just yesterday that Alfred Ashey is now in on floor three in the hospital over here. That's the COVID floor. He has COVID and has been hospitalized. It's been a dark year. And so we come to Christmas. And it's appropriate at Christmas we have all the lights because Christmas is about bringing light into a dark world, bringing light into your dark world. It's about enlightening your heart and your life. It's about changing, changing the world, starting one person at a time, starting with you and reaching out. This is what Luke records. We read parts of this, but let me read it again and go through it briefly. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. Notice what it says. It doesn't just say that they were afraid. They were filled with great fear. Imagine that you are a shepherd out in the fields watching over your flock by night. I couldn't sleep part of last night, so I was up. Our cat was laying there asleep, kind of curled up, and I imagine that's what the sheep were doing too, laying there sleeping, or if you couldn't, as a shepherd sleep, I guess you had plenty of sheep to count. One, two, and on and on it goes. It's dark. Maybe a fire to keep you warm, but there are no street lights. It's a dark world. And suddenly the sky is ablaze with the glory of God as angels break into their lives. And of course, they were filled with great fear. Sounds like 2020s to me as well. The text goes on, and the angel said to them, what is the most important thing you can hear when you're filled with great fear? It is fear not. How many times in the Bible are those words spoken in different contexts? Don't be afraid. Fear not when the women go to an empty tomb. And they see angels, don't be afraid, fear not. As you approach 2021, fear not. Because the light of the world is coming at Christmas. The angel continued, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Good news. That's gospel. It's the good news about Jesus, a child born as depicted here in this little nature scene over here. A child born for you. And amazingly, it is, notice, good news of great joy. Not just joy. We already had great fear. Now we have great joy. The joy will overcome the fear. will take it away. Because this news is so amazing. It's so enlightening. It's so bright that it transforms not only their world, but it transforms them from the inside out. And into this dark world, God breaks in. Into a world filled with COVID-19. Well, you can imagine living back then with Roman occupation and all that that meant for the people there. Taxation, if you think you're taxed, they were taxed too. All of these things coming together. And they're going, where is God? Suddenly, God breaks in. The light shines in the darkness. And it comes down to this verse. For unto you, that is a plural form, it's not just those fellows there. I suggest, I suggest you fit into the you as well. And unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. God's answer to the darkness is a child who is born, placed in a manger, a child who will grow up to suffer and die on a cross to take away all of your sin. He comes to enlighten the dark world which they inhabited, the dark world which we inhabit here in 2020 and to transform it 
beginning in each and every one of our hearts. Transform it from the inside out. I've always found it fascinating that when you read, we have four versions of Jesus' life, four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Only two have anything about Jesus' birth. Matthew talks more about the wise men and all of that. It just kind of mentions in passing that Jesus is born. Mark has absolutely nothing. Luke has the most. That's why we read it every Christmas. And John does something entirely different. His first 14 verses are basically his, well, you could almost call it his Christmas story because it tells you the theology behind the Christmas story. Let me read a portion of that. This is from John chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. By the way, Word there is Jesus. That's who he's referring to if you listen to the whole thing. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the Here's the word again, light of people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness. It fills the darkness. The darkness cannot extinguish it. It grows and grows and lights the whole world until it transforms. Well, it transformed their world just like it could transform our world today. It brought life into a troubled world, into troubled lives, transforming them, eternal life. That's what Christmas is about. As John said in verse 9 then, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. That true light, that eternal light, is Jesus. That's really what Christmas is, isn't it? Christmas in a nutshell, the light of the world coming for you and me to take away all of our sin and such. I watched it again this year, watch it every year. I don't know if you watched the Charlie Brown Christmas TV special. It almost was not made. Almost not made because Charles M. Schultz, this was during the heyday of the Peanuts cartoon series, he said, if you don't leave this part in, you can't have it. And the part he left in is, to me, the most dramatic because Charlie Brown doesn't know what Christmas is about, and he finally screams on the stage, can anyone tell me what Christmas is about? And of all the characters, remember who it is? It's Linus. Linus with his security blanket. If you ever watch the security blanket during his talk, it's important what happens to them. And so Linus says, lights, please. I think that's important. The lights go down, and the spotlight shines on him. The light, ooh, the light, maybe we could do something with that. We'll let that one go for now. And think what he says. I'm going to read it. I have to read it from the King James, because that's what he did. And I'll mess it up if I don't read it. This is what he said to Charlie Brown, and to millions of people who have watched it every year for, since 1964, I think it is, something like that. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Hard to beat King James English, sore afraid. I guess that's a lot of fear right there, isn't it? And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, yes, the word is saying, there's a separate word for saying, but it's saying. So when we sing, maybe we won't go there either saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it was when the angel said, Fear not, that the blanket went down. Fear not, because the light of the world has come for you. And then 
He just said, I know that he did have the blanket up again. He said, that's what Christmas is about, Charlie Brown. And if you watch the show, everything changes after that point. In fact, the Christmas tree is transformed miraculously. The children are transformed miraculously. And it all happens. How? Because of the light of the world born for each and every one of them. That same light of the world can transform your life in this troubled year of 2020 and what we hope is a much better year in 2021. My prayer for you on this Christmas Eve afternoon now is that God will bless you, that the light might shine in your heart and continue to grow and glow and transform you into the person he calls you to become. A person who is enlightened by his love, who is transformed by it, a person who, no matter what happens in the world, be it more civil unrest, be it more troubles with election, be it who knows what pandemic continues and all, that that light transforms your heart. And as it transforms your heart, that it transforms your mind, that then goes out through your arms, through your hands, to be lived out every day. That's what Christmas is about. And it all starts with fear not. For the light has come for you. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, look up, Lord, open our hearts and minds to you this day. We pray. Transform us from who we were into who you call us to be. May your light enlighten us in these, this dark world and transform us, each one of us, beginning today. We ask this in Jesus' most precious name. He who came as a child as the light of the world. His most precious name. Amen. Our service continues with the words of the Nicene Creed. Uh, we're going to do service a little bit different today. You may remain seated for this section, so we'll just do it at this point. So we profess our faith using these words. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was there. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with the Lord to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worship and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge the baptism of the remission of sin, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Our Lord Jesus. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which has been shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The peace of the Christ child be with you always.
Dear Heavenly Father, by sending your Son, our Savior, into the world, you have declared us not guilty by reason of forgiveness in Christ. You have lifted the burden of sin from our shoulders. You have pledged joy in our hearts. You have placed a song on our lips. Father, we lift before you all those who are in need during this season, especially those who do not know the love of the Lord Jesus. Refresh them with the hope found only in you, Lord, in your mercy. So receive then the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. So, Lou, if you could turn the lights back on, we'll extinguish our temples and sing our clothing song. Maybe you could rise as we finish off the service with our recessional prayer.